macro market trends, stock selection, ETFs, options, just some of the topics covered in Cook's Kitchen. Well, our market timer, Kevin Cook, says the market is just waiting to go higher, and he says there are some solid economic and earnings fundamentals for this rally to continue. We said prove it. He mm -hmm. brought some charts. He's here with us now to show us those charts. Yes. So I'm guessing the, these are not technical price charts. No. No, we're actually <laughs> going to get into some a little bit of economics here and, and look at earnings. Um, this is a chart. Looks all spaghetti-like, mm -hmm. uh, wires everywhere <laughs> underneath the desk. But uh, I made this on FRED, which is the uh, Federal Reserve Economic Data website okay. at the St. Louis Federal Reserve. Anybody can go there, pull up any data series for just about any economic indicator that the government has measured, okay. going back to at least World War II, some earlier. And I wanted to see you know, what have been the trends in the last 20 years with industrial production, GDP, personal income, uh, you know, personal consumption. I've got uh, the velocity of money on here and retail sales. Threw them all together. We had retail sales yesterday, which was very strong. Industrial production beat this morning. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this big trend, and you've got the recessions marked in gray. Uh, by the way, any of these videos that we do where we show a chart, you know, folks should be able to stop the video player if they want to, you know, get a look at the chart, so to speak. So mm -hmm. just, you know, stop the video player. And I zoom in here on the guide, the, the different colored bars to those economic indicators. But in the big picture, what I'm looking at is you can definitely see in 2010 and 2011, a lot of these data points peaked, right? And the economy rolled over. Mm. We felt that. We've seen it in earnings estimates come down. We've seen it in, a, in an economy and GDP that seemed to slope down towards 1% stall speed, you know, mm -hmm. and are we going into, we've had three recession scares in three years, hasn't happened. So what I look at this rolling over is that, could this be uh, like the 90s where, yeah, it can roll over, but then just keep chugging along sideways and just have these waves where we avoid recession mm -hmm. and look what the stock market did in the 90s. So that's, that's, that's part of, interesting. that's part of my thesis and we'll, uh, we'll cover some more areas there. Again, go to Fred, check it out. If, you, if you're interested in this sort of thing at all, you can build you know, any data series you want and throw as many on there as you want. All right. Now let's talk about uh, earnings estimates, the mother's milk of, uh, of stock prices. <laughs> um, and this is uh, data from Barclays where I'm, I'm comparing the earnings estimates for the S&P mm -hmm. and how they've declined. You see this, you know, uh, on the, the chart on the left, um, on the left-hand scale are 2012 estimates peaked in July of 11, and they just kept coming down. And on the right, the right scale is 2013. You can see back in the summer of 2011, estimates for 2013 were at $126 for the S&P. Okay. There's no way we're going to make that. We'll be lucky if we do 105. And so that's why, and things are still optimistic if analysts' aggregate estimates for the S&P are around 110, mm -hmm. we're, we're subject to revisions. This is what Shiraz Mian talks about all the time is, hey, we've seen the peak in earnings, we've seen the peak in margins, right. these estimates are too high for 2013, they're going to continue to come down. Um, and there are the growth estimates on the right-hand chart. Uh, last thing I want to show you here from Barclays is, you know, flip the PE over, what do you get? Earnings over price, you get the earnings yield of the S&P. Mm. So this is a long-term valuation look, and they use 1976 as the mean here of an earnings yield of just below 9%. Well, when you flip it upside down, you want a high number. You want to see, you know, um, you know that, that, that means the market's cheap. When, it, when the number gets real low, when the, your earnings yield on the S&P is, is below, say, 6%, down to 4%, the market is expensive. Those are their notes down there. So where are we now? Well, if you look at, if the S&P earned 100 bucks in 2012, which is yet to be determined because we don't have all of fourth quarter's earnings in, but let's right. say it earned 100 bucks at S&P 1450, which seems to be about fair market value, that's an earnings yield of 6.9%. That makes equities attractive. Now, what if the S&P earns 105 bucks in 2013 and let's say we rally up to 1600 At 105 and 1600 the earnings yield is still 6.5%. Equities are still attractive there. So mm. 
Um, this is just one way of, of talking about the market there. All right. Well, I hate to dredge up the past, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I will anyway. Uh, a while back, we talked about the uh, transports and the Dow theory yeah. and how the transports were not confirming a rally. Uh, but um, they've been kind of strong lately. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely, uh, you know, regardless of whether or not you believe in Dow theory, it'd be nice to see the transports come along, you know, shipping, uh, rails, uh, airlines mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's activity are we moving our goods moving because somebody's buying them sort of thing yeah and so here's a snapshot of the transports uh, I said I wasn't going to show any price charts but just one huh <laughs> um, this is a three-year chart a weekly chart transports are making all-time highs after we broke out we we broke that descending trend line snapped out of there above 5200 and a close above 5600 on a weekly basis would be an all-time weekly closing high and we're just over those highs of early 2011. Okay. Uh, I've also been seeing some of the sentiment surveys that you follow, like investors' intelligence, where it's being indicated that there's there are a lot more bulls lately. Yeah. So if you were looking at that as a contrarian indicator, would that concern you? Definitely. And I watch those. You know, there's investors' intelligence. Uh, there's the AAII survey. Um, and a lot of these are not of these are not surveys of fund managers. They're of retail traders. Right. So when they get overly bullish, that is a contrarian sign. They're not overly bullish right now. They're they're strongly bullish. Um, and I have two things to say there. One, that bullishness can run higher than than anyone expects. We've seen previous peaks there. And secondly, you know the the retail investor is much more sophisticated than he or she was 10 years ago. Mm, so good point. I kind of say that the, the sentiment surveys, uh, you know, con contrarianism ain't what it used to be mm. because retail traders have more access to information, um, you know, whether it's economic research or stock research, right. and they're not always wrong. So they're, they're actually, I, I, I got to hand it to them that, they, you know, they've got this one right. I'm a bull here, and I think the market's going higher, and so we've got a lot of independent you know, self-directed investors on board. You know, one thing, uh, when we talked about the transports, I wanted to mention housing. You know, housing is obviously uh, an area that continues to surprise to the upside. It's not just a sawtooth bottom anymore. It's building momentum. Yeah. And one thing I saw last week that got me really excited was uh, Blackstone Group, which is a private equity fund. They're one of the largest private real estate investors. They set up a fund a couple of years ago of over $10 billion to buy single family homes. They're just out there buying single family homes and sometimes they're fixing it up, whatever. But uh, the guy came out last week and he said, you know what, we're ramping up our, the speed of our purchases. They were purchasing $100 million worth of single family homes um, in, the, in Q4. They're ramping that up because house prices are climbing faster than they expected. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we've, we talked about contrarianism. One, from the from the retail surveys, I want to show you something. This is a, a survey that that uh, B of A Merrill did last week, where they surveyed buy, the buy side fund managers. Two hundred and fifty four fund managers managing seven hundred and fifty four billion dollars. These guys are very bullish. They have their highest equity allocation since February of twenty eleven, and the highest economic confidence since April of twenty ten. Um, and net net, fifty nine percent of them expect the global economy to strengthen. So, um, that uh, is that contrarian. I'm not so sure because these are guys putting money to work. That means you know they're bullish on on the global economy and not just for this quarter. You know they have an outlook that is probably six to twelve months. Uh, one thing to note: my two dates here of February 2011 and April 2010 were also uh, prior market tops in those in those years. So we saw some declines from there. But uh, remember, the sell side was extremely bearish. BOFA does this survey of the sell side, and they were historically, like in 25 years, the most bearish they'd ever been. Mm. Um, and they were wrong. They were wrong to be so bearish at, at S&P 1300 um, last summer. And the buy side is saying, hey, we like the economic fundamentals here. So right. that's, that'll be my, uh, my once a quarter look at economics since... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm an amateur economist, or an armchair one anyway. Well, it's always interesting. Speaking of interesting, you can go to Zaxx.com, our website, if you're not there already watching this video, and check out the Cook's Kitchen section of the website, because along with these weekly videos, Kevin, in between them, also writes other interesting articles that you'll probably want to read. With Kevin Cook, I'm Terry Ruffalo.